Polymorph is a fourth level spell in D&D and is considered one of the most versatile, if not powerful, spells in the game, due to a wide array of utility you can achieve by simply turning someone into another creature. So in this video, we'll be going over some of the best creatures you can polymorph someone into for a specific situation. But before we do that, let's actually go over this spell itself and what it does. Along with being a fourth level spell, Polymorph has a range of 60 feet and requires concentration in order to be sustained for up to one hour. If you target an unwilling creature with a spell, they have to make a wisdom saving throw in order to not be transformed. And while transformed, they assume the hit points and stats of whatever beast they're transformed into, also maintaining its alignment and personality. A creature that's transformed cannot become a creature whose challenge rating is higher than the level of the target CR or level. So a level 5 NPC, for example, can't be transformed into a T-Rex, for instance. And it's also worth noting that a creature can't be polymorphed if they are a shapeshifter or have zero hit points. And if an attack makes your hit points go down to zero, you transform back to your normal form and take the remainder of the damage, if any. One other thing before we begin, while you can cast polymorph on yourself, be aware that any damage you sustain will force concentration checks for maintaining the transformation. With this in mind, let's begin our list, starting with the Brontosaurus which will be stomped in our way in at number 10 on this list, which is a gargantuan sized beast with some very basic stats and is basically the baseline for what you want to be when it comes to using polymorph on your allies. It has a good amount of bulk with its 121 hit points and 15 AC, as well as proficiency in constitution saving throws. Along with this, it comes with a powerful tail attack that's a plus eight to hit, 20 foot reach, and deals 68 plus five bludgeon damage, or an average of 32 damage and a very strong stomp attack that has the same reach and two hit modifier, but deals 5 to 8 plus 5 bludgeoning damage, or an average of 27 damage, but forces the target to make a DC 14 strength saving throw or be knocked prone if they fail. The biggest drawback, however, is the fact that, unlike stronger beasts you can transform a party member into, it doesn't come with multi-attack, so you'd only ever have one chance to get in a good hit. On the other hand, having a 20 foot reach is also nice, since it also helps set up to balance a brontosaurus's base 30 foot speed, making it hard for creatures to run out of range effectively. While you're not a giant ape with the ability to throw rocks or a fast moving Tyrannosaurus Rex, you are effective at just tanking attacks and dealing a decent chunk of damage while having the ability to set up your allies by attempting to knock enemies prone with your stomp attack. You also have more AC than the aforementioned beasts, making it slightly harder for creatures to tear through your natural armor and having proficiency in any kind of saving throw as a beast is really solid compared to the giant ape and T-Rex, which don't get any saving throw proficiencies. Unfortunately, due to its gargantuan size, it might be hard to pull off making someone a brontosaurus, since gargantuan creatures can occupy a 4x4 square or more, depending on how big your DM wants to make the brontosaurus, meaning you'd only be able to polymorph someone into one in a very open space. All in all, a very good creature to be transformed into since it supports decent stats, and it can be used as soon as you learn Polymorph at 7th level for full casters since Brontosaurus are only CR5, as opposed to the T-Rex, which is CR8, making this a really good choice for the number 10 spot on this list. And at number 9 on this list, we have the Quipper. When it comes to aquatic exploration, you can do no wrong with becoming a sea creature of some kind, but when it comes to water-based combat or exploration, you can definitely do much better than becoming a simple Quipper, with its pathetically low stats and a single hit point. But when it comes to fighting on land, you can do no better than turning your enemies into a simple quipper for the same reasons. The quipper has zero movement speed on land, meaning a creature can only flop around in its own space the entire time it's polymorphed, rather than trying to run away like some of the other CR0 beasts you can polymorph someone into. The quipper also isn't very dangerous, as it only attacks and deals a measly one piercing damage on hit, meaning it won't be much of a threat to you or anyone else in combat which is especially useful if you plan to interact with a quipper in any way. Basically, transforming someone into a quipper while on land is the absolute best way to disable a creature while in combat, or even outside of combat if you're planning on kidnapping a bandit leader for questioning via the Speak With Animals spell and a bucket of water. But the reason the quipper only takes the number 9 spot on this list is because there are some major drawbacks to doing this. Because Polymorph allows you to concentrate on the spell for up to one hour, it might be more beneficial to turn someone into a mouse or a rat since neither of them require water in order to breathe. And if a quipper is out of water for an extended period of time, it will actually hit zero hit points, causing the creature to revert back to its normal form. Whether or not this puts a creature at dying status, like the rules for suffocating state, whenever a creature can no longer hold its breath, it isn't really clear. You can still keep the creature out of combat for some time, if nothing else. The rules for suffocating basically say that you can hold your breath for a number of minutes equal to your constitution modifier. 
But if you're equipped with the minus one modifier in your constitution, you can instead only hold your breath for a minimum of 30 seconds while you're outside of water. This equals to a five round grace period before the polymorph creature actually starts suffocating, since at this point, the number of actual rounds a creature can survive while suffocating is equal to their constitution modifier, or a minimum of one round in this case. The equipper would essentially only be around for a total of six rounds, where its hit points would hit zero at the start of its seventh turn. But since combat typically lasts for three to four rounds on average, if you want to take someone out of combat for multiple rounds without them having to be a threat or running away, then the Quipper is still your best option for this. If you plan on keeping them transformed for any longer, you're better off transforming a creature into a plethora of other low threat beasts, such as a crab or frog, since both these creatures can breathe both air and water, while also being relatively harmless, but have a chance to retreat a bleat at a measly 20 foot movement speed. And at number 8 in this list, we have a two-way tie between the owl and its bigger brother, the giant owl. The owl is a CR0 tiny beast that has a fly speed of 60 feet and a walk speed of 5. Its tiny frame is perfect for navigating through smaller spaces, while its fast flying speed is extremely useful for scouting out larger settlements in a hurry. Both the owl and the giant owl also come with keen hearing and sight, granting them advantage on any perception checks which rely on hearing or sight, which makes them perfect for spying on a group of bandits held up inside a building and monitoring movements and patterns. Additionally, you have dark vision with a range of 120 feet and the flyby trait, which makes you immune to opportunity attacks while flying out of an enemy's reach, allowing you to get out of sticky situations in a pinch. And since you've advantage on all perception checks that rely on hearing or sight, that means your passive perception is effectively 18 if you're an owl, or 20 if you're a giant owl, which makes it easier for you to spot traps or spot a hiding creature. Both the owl and giant owl have their ups and downs, but fulfill the same role, and are the best at it. While the owl is much weaker and fragile, it's smaller, which might come in handy if you need to squeeze through some tight spaces or remain inconspicuous. Meanwhile, the giant owl has slightly higher stats and can defend itself more easily if it needs to with its talents, which deal 2d6 plus 1 slashing damage, as opposed to just one point of slashing damage like the normal owl, and possesses slightly better bulk to sustain glancing blows with its 19 hit points. While in most cases you would want to transform your ally into a tiny owl for scouting simply due to its ability to not draw attention to itself, the giant owl also makes for a great substitute simply due to its slightly higher stats, making it generally more useful for making perception checks or attacks whenever it's needed. But there is one major benefit that the giant owl has over the regular owl, languages. Since you inherit all the statistics of the creature while polymorph, this also includes the languages that a beast might be able to speak or understand. As a result, while you're polymorphed as a giant owl, you're not only able to speak to other giant owls, but you're able to understand common, elvish, and sylvan but can't speak those languages. So along with being able to visually monitor and patrol a group of people, you're also able to understand what might be said by a group of people. Unfortunately, being a large creature, the polymorph party member might need to get creative with how it approaches the situation if it doesn't want to be detected. But the reason these two beasts only take number on this list is due to the fact that, while they are the very best when it comes to scouting, owls tend to be nocturnal creatures, though not all of them and so might draw suspicion if you polymorph yourself into something like an owl during the day, in which case you might want to go for something like an eagle or a hawk instead, despite not being as good in comparison. And at number 7, we have the Quetzalcoatlus. This is a huge beast that is also pretty great to use during combat. Like the Brontosaurus, the Coatlus can be a good polymorph target for an ally because it's a challenge rating of only 2, meaning you can transform into it as soon as you learn the spell. But there are some differences that can make the Quatlus a lot less useful than a Brontosaurus. The first and most obvious difference is the fact that the Quetzalcoatlus has an absolutely insane flying speed, being 80, with the downside of having a walking speed of 10 feet. This enables you to sword your destination in a pinch. You also get a nice little feature to your bite attack, which already deals 3d6 plus 2 piercing damage and has a 10 foot reach, to also deal an additional 3d6 piercing damage if you've flown at least 30 feet towards the target right before you hit it, dealing a total of 22 damage on average. While not as much as a Brontosaurus's 32 average bludgeoning damage with its tail attack, the Quetzal comes with an added benefit of possessing the flyby trait, making it immune to opportunity attacks whenever it flies out of an enemy's reach. All of this combined basically makes the Quetzal the perfect hit and run creature to turn into. Since you can fly 30 feet towards a creature, bite them, then fly 50 feet into the air where you're safe from most attacks. However, the Quetzalcoatlus is not without its shortcomings. Being a CR2 creature, the Quetzal naturally has lower stats than a lot of the other beasts you might want to turn into. It has a decent bulk of 13 AC and 30 hit points, but any decently damaging range attack can very easily knock you down to 0 hit points, 
causing to revert back to normal form and taking falling damage, depending on how high up you were when you were dropping, unless you have feather fall or a balloon pack to help avoid breaking fall damage. You also only have a plus four to hit, which is relatively low for the level you learn polymorph, which does make the brontosaurus look more favorable to use overall, especially when you take both of the creatures lack of a multi attack into account. However, because flying in D&D 5e is so strong, this is honestly more than enough to spring the Quetzalcoatlus forward to the spawn this list, simply because you can just nullify melee attacks altogether by just attacking and then flying away. And with its 80 foot flying speed, you can also make more use of the battlefield in general to try and play with cover when range attacks get involved. So as long as you're mindful of the increase in size to huge while transformed. And at number six, we have the Mammoth. If you need to turn into a huge sized creature that is strong, bulky, and able to move large quantities of items or objects that might be in your way, then you can absolutely do no wrong by becoming a Mammoth. With its 24 strength score, you can hit enemies both easily and powerfully with your gore and stomp attacks, dealing 25 and 29 piercing and bludgeoning damage respectively. Stomp, however, does require your target to be prone and has a 5 foot reach as opposed to a gore's 10 foot reach, but deals slightly more damage. And at first glance, this doesn't seem like much, since, like the Quetzalcoatlus and Brontosaurus, the Mammoth inherently doesn't have a multi-attack to make use of. Fortunately, Trampling Charge is an ability the Mammoth has, which allows it to attempt to knock a creature prone if it's moved at least 20 foot in a straight line towards its target and hits it with its gore attack, not only knocking it prone if they fail a DC 18 strength saving throw, but can immediately follow up with its stomp attack as a bonus action. This not only gives the Mammoth a unique way to set itself up for its stomp attack, but also makes it a much higher threat to creatures that are already prone to begin with, since the bonus action works against any prone target, not just ones you knock down with its trampling charge. And that's not to mention the fact that the Mammoth would have advantage in all of its attacks due to the creatures being prone. The Mammoth also sports a good amount of bulk with its 126 hit points, meaning you won't be knocked out of it so easily. You also have a respectable 40 feet of movement speed, which is pretty good for closing gaps or chasing down runners. Another unique perk about becoming the Mammoth is the fact that, because of its incredible size and strength, you can carry or lift a total of 1,440 pounds of stuff. So if you have the time and a spell slot for it, you could haul some pretty hefty loads of gear and equipment from one place to another with very little trouble at all. Or if there's a bunch of debris in your way, you could simply turn into a mammoth and charge through it all with very little problems. As for why the mammoth only sits at number 6 on this list, it's mainly due to the fact that, while it has amazing single target potential, requiring a creature to be prone in order to gain two attacks is not always favorable especially since some creatures might be immune to the condition, while other creatures you can polymorph into are not only stronger, but can consistently attack multiple times simply due to having access to multi-attack. However, its usefulness as a beast of burden to carry or lift cargo and break through barricades or move obstacles, along with being a readily available beast that you can turn into as soon as you hit level 7 and gain access to the polymorph spell are both useful enough to place it at a higher spot on this list. And at number 5, we have the giant crocodile. This huge beast is a CR5 creature that works very well as a crowd control unit. While not as bulky as some of the other entries on this list, the giant crocodile makes up for the shortcoming with its ability to grapple and restrain creatures with its bite attack. Now, what makes the bite so good is the fact that there's no saving throw or ability check required in order to grapple someone. It just happens as part of the attack when you hit, and until the grapple ends, the target is also restrained. And being restrained comes with all sorts of debuffs, like disadvantage in all the creature's attack rolls and dexterity saving throws, while attack rolls against the restrained creature have advantage. Also, their movement speed is reduced to zero, and they can no longer benefit from anything that would increase their movement speed until they're freed from being restrained. A creature can, of course, break free from the scrapple, but they'd have to use their action in order to do so by beating a DC 16 athletics or acrobatics check contested against the restrainer's athletics check. Additionally, the giant crocodile also has a tail attack, which you can use to attack a creature that's not been grappled by your bite attack, dealing an average of 14 bludgeoning damage while also possessing a chance to knock the creature prone on a DC 16 strength saving throw. One of the biggest downsides of becoming a giant crocodile has to be the fact that, despite having multi-attack, you would only be allowed to make a one bite attack and one tail attack. While not inherently a bad thing, since most multi-attacks work in a similar manner, it can actually be to your detriment. When you consider that you can't use your tail attack against a creature that's grappled by your bite attack, and vice versa. You can't bite another creature if you're already grappling another creature with the same move. In short, you can only really use your multi-attack feature to attack two different creatures rather than the same target. And there are other creatures you can transform into that utilize this mechanic much better. The giant crocodile does have decent defenses with its 14 AC and 85 hit points, but it also comes with a swim speed of 50 feet. 
making it very strong in underwater combat, while also still being useful on land. It also comes with the ability to hold its breath for 30 minutes, making it capable of hiding just below the surface of water for small periods of time if needed. Overall, this is a pretty niche beast to transform into compared to the other entries on this list, but comes with the benefits of being more well-rounded than many of the other creatures through the use of its strong lockdown abilities in the form of the restrain and prone conditions. And a 50 fit swim speed is also a really nice bonus for when you need to cross bodies of water, such as rivers, ponds, and lakes. However, due to being capped at 30 minutes of holding your breath, the giant crocodile might not be the best choice for underwater exploration. For that, you might want to check out the next entry on this list. And at number 4, we have the giant shark. This huge beast has a challenge rating of 5 and is absolutely perfect for underwater navigation and combat. It has a swim speed of 50 feet and 126 hit points, making it hard to take down very easily, and comes with a fairly decent bite attack that deals an average of 22 piercing damage and the blood frenzy trait, allowing to make those bite attacks with advantage, so as long as the creature it's attacking has less than their maximum number of hit points. You also get 60 feet of blind sight, meaning you don't have to worry about not being able to see a creature within that range, even if they would be invisible, which can work extremely well when fighting underwater. The reason why the giant shark ranks so high in this list, however, is because underwater combat, while not necessarily common, is one of the more annoying mechanics in the game. This goes doubly so if you don't have a default swim speed, since melee attacks you make while underwater have disadvantage unless you have a swim speed, with a few exceptions that are exempt from this rule. Ranged weapons also automatically miss when they're made past their normal range, while also having disadvantage on its normal range unless it's a heavy crossbow or a net. So, being able to maneuver through water quickly while having a consistent form of attack that even gets to have advantage is almost always going to be the best option over anything else you might be able to do when it comes to fighting underwater. And with 50 feet of swimming speed, the giant shark just makes the best underwater scout you can have over every other kind of beast you can become. And at number 3, we have the lowly rat. The rat is a tiny CR0 beast that can actually serve two different purposes unlike the other entries on this list. When used against an enemy, you can basically render them useless since rats can only deal one piercing damage if it attacks you, and with a 20 foot movement speed, it's not too hard to catch it if it tries to run away. The idea is this polymorph transformation is similar to the Quipper, where it can work as a decent way to disable a creature and get them out of combat. But unlike the Quipper, the rat doesn't have to worry about suffocating on land, so you can keep it inside a box for an hour or until you decide with your party on how you want to handle the transformed creature. You also don't have to worry about carrying around a bucket of water for this purpose either. On the other side of the spectrum, however, you can also turn yourself or one of your allies into a rat as a way to scout out certain areas, as most cities and settlements wouldn't really care about the odd rat or two. And while you would only have 20 feet of movement speed, if you're making good use of small spaces while scouting, you should be able to squeeze your way out of sticky situations, like retreating into a mouse hole in the wall or under some furniture. You also have 30 feet of dark vision, which can be useful in dark rooms, and you have keen smell which gives you advantage on perception checks related to smell. Sadly, you can't really engage in any sort of combats while you're transformed into a rat. So if you get harassed by a hungry bird of prey or a stray cat, you run the risk of having your cover blown if things don't go your way. But if you're feeling a bit saucy, you could instead opt to turn into a giant rat, which is a little bit bigger than a normal rat, being small instead of tiny, but has a bit more of a bite to its bite attack, which deals an average of four piercing damage. There's also a diseased variant of the bite attack that you can use, which slowly decreases the maximum hit points of the creatures every 24 hours if they fail a DC 10 constitution saving throw against it until they are cured through magical means or reach zero hit points, where they'll just die outright if the latter happens. But overall, the reason the rat takes number 3 spot on this list, but not the giant rat, is because the giant rat's combat prowess isn't remarkable enough to substitute for just being a normal rat. And because it's a lot bigger than a normal rat, that means you stand out a lot more and are prone to being noticed or even attacked by a much larger creature than yourself with no real way to defend yourself or hide. The reason why the owl and giant owl tied on this list is because the giant owl had enough differences to balance out what it loses from being a normal owl that it could afford to be in the same spot, while the giant rat simply doesn't. That being said, the rat is a very good polymorph transformation target that works equally well on both enemies and allies, which is why it ranks so high on this list. And at number 2 in this list, we have the Giant Ape. This huge beast is a CR7 creature with a good amount of bulk at 151 hit points, very good mobility at 40 feet of walking and climbing speed, and hard-hitting options for combat situations. With your multi-attack option, you can make two fists attack that deal an average of around 22 bludgeoning damage each, both with a reach of 10 feet, which can make it easier to attack creatures that might be trying to get away or just be out of reach otherwise. 
Alternatively, you can make a single ranged attack in order to throw a rock at a creature with an average of 30 bludgeoning damage on hit. The normal range for this attack is 50 feet, while the long range is 100 feet. And since you have a plus 9 to hit, this makes the giant ape perfect for throwing these rocks with relative ease. And although the giant ape doesn't really have much going for it outside of combat, it at least has good enough athletics to be able to make use of its enormous strength. As for the reason why the giant ape sits at number 2 on this list, Basically, in terms of combat, you can't really do any better than this creature. It can attack multiple times a turn, has a ranged option, a huge health pool, and very good mobility, which all makes it a much better well-rounded creature than anything else on this list. And to top it all off, since the giant ape is a CR7 creature, it's immediately a viable option to pick when choosing to transform yourself or an ally into a creature, so when comparing the strength and benefits of a giant ape with the previous entries on this list, there's almost no reason to choose anything other than the giant ape, at least when it comes to combat. Of course, there are some exceptions, like underwater combat or taking advantage of melee focused encounters by flying around more. But the giant ape is as general purpose as it gets and makes a wonderful safety net when you're unsure of what the encounter might entail. But the one beast that tramples the rest in comparison is our number one pick, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. This huge king of beasts possesses some very strong attacks similar to the giant ape, but with the added caveat of being able to keep hold of whatever it bites, which deals an average of 33 piercing damage, grappling and restraining creatures of medium size or smaller until they escape with the grapple for the DC 17 athletics or acrobatics check. Similarly, the T-Rex's attacks work exactly the same as the giant crocodile, where it can't bite another creature if it already has one grappled by this attack, and the T-Rex can't use its tail attack against the same target as its bite attack, so it's pretty much always going to be attacking two different creatures every turn. That being said, its attacks are still some of the strongest damage a beast can do in the game, while possessing a very strong crowd control option. And if you combine this with its immense 50 feet of movement, you can very easily detect and lock down a single creature by running over and biting it, so it can't really make attack rolls effectively, or move out of the way without being threatened with an opportunity attack. However, the biggest and only real downside for a combat transformation is the fact that the T-Rex is a CR8 creature, meaning you won't be able to turn yourself or allies into one for one more level after obtaining Polymorph, which isn't that much of a weight to begin with, and it doesn't have the versatility of movement like the giant ape does. However, a huge T-Rex is such an amazing option when it comes to intimidating and attacking your foes that it has to take number one spot on this list. Alright, and that's the list. Do you agree with this list or have any other polymorph targets you enjoy using against your enemies or your allies? Have an idea for a future top 10 video just like this one? If so, I'd love to about those things down in the comments. Also, take care.